Hey guys, I'm Lucas and welcome to K-News featuring the SpaceX Falcon 9. The rocket's first stage is a reusable booster with landing legs on the sides. As these suggest, it will perform an experimental landing again, which makes SpaceX currently the only company in their business to follow such a strategy. Yes, every other orbital rocket is expandable, which means the only part surviving the launch is the payload. However, since it is still experimental, the returned boosters are especially used to gather data about their overall shape and the follow-up rockets receive minor updates frequently. So they are not being reused yet, but it should only be a matter of weeks and I really look forward to that. On top of the booster sits as always SpaceX upper stage, which will carry the payload to orbit. The unmanned Dragon spacecraft is not surrounded by a fairing and has also no launch escape capabilities. It is however not meant to carry astronauts and instead acts as a test platform for the future Dragon version 2. The launch is scheduled for tomorrow morning at 4.45 UTC which is midnight locally and the Falcon 9 will lift off from Cape Canaveral, Florida. I decided to launch in daylight so you can actually see something on the screen. As most Falcons carrying Dragon so far, it will head to the ISS and therefore turn northeast to match the station's orbit as good as possible. The first milestone is reached after 1 minute and 8 seconds when the rocket goes through the region of maximum aerodynamic pressure. As the rocket travels up it gets faster and faster and this point is crucial because Falcon will still be in a somewhat dense atmosphere at 10 km when it breaks the speed of sound. There the aerodynamic properties change drastically between sub and supersonic speeds and this is accompanied by a shockwave, not only traveling as a boom sound through air but also through the rocket's body. Just after separation, which occurs 2 minutes and 24 seconds into the flight, the booster will rotate around twice because it is a flight to a low Earth orbit. There the horizontal speed moving away from the launch site is much lower than going to a geosynchronous transfer orbit for example. After the first rotation it will perform a boost back burn where it will aim for a big concrete field on land a few kilometers next to Cape Canaveral. Having pretty much reversed its trajectory, the second rotation will move its heavy bottom section like a dart arrow to the front again and use its tiny wings to control the rocket efficiently. While that happens, the upper stage will do the majority of the work when it comes to speed. Its burn will take almost 7 minutes and I highly recommend to watch both live streams SpaceX offers to get all the different camera angles at once. These are by the way also linked in the description. Now the Dragon has two compartments for cargo. One is pressurized inside its capsule and loaded with more than 2 metric tons of supplies and science equipment. One very interesting little test module is the Phase Change Material Heat Exchanger or PCMHX. Wait, that can't be right, I think NASA forgot to choose a funny acronym. This little guy can absorb excessive heat by melting some kind of wax. If the heat is needed back, it can release it, which hardens the wax again. Using a common radiator on the other hand, the heat would be lost which makes such a device quite useful on spacecraft which are orbiting the moon for example. In sunlight it is very warm and the heat could be stored to release it when it enters the shadow. The neat thing is, the craft does not need to drain its batteries on the dark side, which saves a lot of mass since the batteries can be smaller and also the solar panels since they don't have to charge the batteries as much as they had to using an electric heater. Probably the most important payload however is inside its trunk. The International Docking Adapter 2 or IDA2 for short. It will be placed on the node where the space shuttle used to dock. There were originally two of these adapters but the first one was sadly destroyed on the Falcon 9 failure last year and IDA2 comes as a replacement for that. IDA3 which will replace IDA2 in its original position will launch on a Falcon 9 as well in 2017 as part of the Commercial Resupply Services 12. As the upper stage continues its burn, the first highlight of the day will be of course the experimental landing again. The Falcon booster will light up the night sky and if everything goes according to plan it will touch down smoothly and hopefully keep staying upright. While everybody cheers, the upper stage will finish its job as well and separate Dragon as the next big milestone which will then catch up with the ISS on a lower orbit within approximately 2 days. Now before I go on, a little shout out to my patrons. These people support my little crowdfunding campaign and while it is optional it definitely helps a lot. If you want to help as well, simply follow the link in the description. Having arrived at the station, Dragon will not dock by itself as you see in the video and will instead be grabbed with the station's scanner arm. It will not only mount the spacecraft at the right port but also remove the docking adapter from its trunk and position it as mentioned a few centimeters away from one of the Harmony module's docking ports. Astronauts will then climb outside to attach it to the station manually which will be live streamed as well. The main reason for the docking port adapters by the way are the new sensors and digital communication links. 
These will allow the future spacecraft like Dragon V2 or Boeing Starliner to dock autonomously. Ok, that was KNews episode 49 about SpaceX Falcon 9 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching. Thank you.